In the previous class, we have learned about concentration of a solution. Today, we'll be understanding the concept of saturated and unsaturated solution. So, a saturated solution is one in which no more solute is dissolved. No more solute will be dissolved at a given temperature. So, imagine a scenario, imagine a picture when you take a spoonful of sugar and add it to a cup of hot tea. And after stirring, as you stir, the sugar particles will begin to dissolve, disappearing into the liquid. Now, this process leads us to explore the concept of saturation. So, there is a concept that is saturation. Whether something is saturated or unsaturated, it depends on the maximum point of that saturation. Now, the process of saturation. So, we can define saturated solution as one in which no more solute will be dissolved at a given temperature. Means after this, no more solute will, uh, can be dissolved in that very solution because it has reached its maximum solubility. So, because it has reached it has already reached so it is maximum solubility maximum solubility now let's understand this for illustration for an example now in the example we'll take a beaker we'll take a beaker here's a beaker and in this beaker we are adding, we are going to add, there is solvent present in this. Now, we are going to add sugar or salt with the solvent as a solute. Now, we are going to add a spoonful of sugar. Now, after adding one spoon of sugar, these solute particles, they will dissolve in the solution, in the solvent. That means this is, now this time, this is unsaturated. This is unsaturated, means we can add more and more solute in this. And after some point, at some point, at some instance, now, what will happen if you will add two or three at a point after adding three? Now, the fourth spoon will it will remain undissolved. It will left. It will remain undissolved and it will settle at the bottom. Now, these particles of sugar remain undissolved. Undissolved means they will be uh, they will be setting at the bottom without dissolving. So, therefore, we can say after a certain time. Uh, now, we have if if you further add now the additional solute added to this solvent will no longer dissolve in the solution because now they will settle at this because they have attained they have attained a point that is maximum solubility means after some time they will not now dissolve so this is called at that time it will be called as saturated solution and before that it, it will be called as unsaturated because more and more solute are, are being dissolved till this line till this point it will be called as unsaturated because more solutes solute particles will be dissolved and they are dissolving in it and after this they will be called as saturated because now maximum solubility has been attained so this was all about solubility now and this was all about this now this this signals then after after this un, after the saturation point has attained this signals that the saturation point is reached so yahan pe saturation point reach hua hai saturation point yahan pe attained hua now no more solute will be dissolved in this saturation point is attained are uh, reached now no more solute will be dissolved while as in the unsaturated solution we can say more and more it is the solution in which more and more solute particles will be dissolved that means it's not a maximum solubility concept so unsaturated mein kya hoga? Mein more and more solute particles will be dissolved so unsaturated means just may hum abhi or solute particle dissolve kar sakte hain so agar dissolve kar sakte hain kya hum bol sakte hain isme maximum solubility ka wo point abhi attain nahi hua hai yes and that, therefore, we can say maximum solubility is not attained or reached, is not reached uh, usually. So, it's my maximum solubility ka concept region. It does not reach it is maximum solubility. Now, there are two applications of this. On increasing the temperature, what will happen? And on decreasing temperature, what will happen? There are two cases. Therefore, we can write a subtitle as effect of, effect of temperature. On saturated solution, means where particles have already dissolved, now no more solute will be dissolved. Saturated solution, saturated means just now, no solute will be dissolved. Suppose this is a beaker, and in this beaker there are three solute particles. There are solvent particles also, but we are, for an example, for a supposition, we are taking on the solute particles. Suppose these are three solute. Suppose this is water. This is water particle, solvent particle, and let's suppose this is sugar dissolved in this. Sugar means this is solute dissolved in this now this this much amount of solute is already dissolved in this this is a saturated 
solution now if we if we now if we add one more spoon to it this solution will not be dissolved in this simply because it has already reached its saturation point now after adding this they will reside at the bottom they will settle down at the bottom they will remain as undissolved they will, they will be left undisturbed now if we will increase the temperature what will happen the spaces between these three water particles or solvent particles will increase one space increases more they will they will proclaim them they will they will, they will ask them come here so inko bulaya jayega aa aa bhai jab ye particles solute particles jo hain inko more solute particles ko adjust kar sakte hain beech mein yes how because as you know one of the temperature of particle increases its kinetic energy increases and it can move in all possible direction to yahan pe is beaker pe hum dikha sakte hain ab ye particle pehle yahan the thode se yahan pe tha ye particle ab ye idhar gaya to little bit space has been increased now ab isme itna sugar aayega means they will ask some particles come here and adjust yourself so they have accommodated little more solute particles means saturation se ye kahan gaye and saturation ki tarah to can we say we can convert saturated solution into unsaturation into unsaturated solution by just increasing temperature so this was case first case first means on increasing temperature iska opposite case kya hoga on decreasing temperature once we decrease temperature what will happen unsaturation will again shift towards saturation because the spaces will decrease and these solute particles will go back at the bottom they will settle there and now the saturation means the solubility has been decreased so there is also new concept of solubility now from this picture we can understand the concept of solubility now what is solubility solubility is again the amount of solute present in saturated solution at a given temperature so solubility solubility is the amount of solute the amount of it is the amount of solute present in solute it is the amount of solute present in the solution present in the saturated solution you we can say at a given temperature present in the saturated solution saturated solution at a given temperature so ek temperature pe solubility kya hogi us solute kitne solute particles present honge kisme ek saturated solution mein ab ye temperature pe hi to depend hai because at a certain temperature solubility kuch hogi agar temperature ko increase kiya jayega to solubility will definitely increase क्योंकि टेम्परेचर से पार्टिकल्स की कैंटिक एनर्जी इंक्रीज होती है दे विल वाइब्रेट एंड वंस दे वाइब्रेट दे विल मूव टुवर्ड्स कर्नल्स ऑफ एनी वेसल और बीकर वंस दे मूव टुवर्ड्स कर्नल द स्पेस हैज बीन इंक्रीज्ड वंस द स्पेस इज इंक्रीज्ड सॉल्यूट पार्टिकल्स कैन बी मोर सॉल्यूट पार्टिकल्स कैन बी अकोमोडेटेड विद इन सो देयरफॉर ऑन इंक्रीजिंग टेंपरेचर सॉल्युबिलिटी विल आल्सो इंक्रीज सो वी कैन से टेंपरेचर और सॉल्युबिलिटी और समटाइम्स वी कैन से सॉल्युबिलिटी डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू टेंपरेचर और टेंपरेचर डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू सॉल्युबिलिटी मींस अगर आपने टेंपरेचर इंक्रीज किया तो सॉल्युबिलिटी विल इंक्रीज अगर आपने टेंपरेचर को डिक्रीज किया तो सॉल्युबिलिटी विल डिक्रीज सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट सॉल्युबिलिटी नाउ कमिंग टू आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक देयर इज एलॉयज सो व्हाट आर एलॉयज सो एलॉयज आर द होमोजेनियस मिक्सचर of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal that is the mixture of so we can say mixture of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal or a metal and a non metal and cannot be separated into their individual components by physical methods and it cannot be separated and in form separate nahi kar sakte cannot be separated into their individual components individual components by physical methods physical methods like sieving ah uh, physical methods like sieving magnetic stirring and say inko separate nahi kar sakte like sieving magnetic stirring इन दोनों मेथड से इनको सेपरेट नहीं कर सकते एंड ये पॉइंट इसमें बहुत नाउ देयर आर सम ऑफ दिस एलॉयज देयर आर सम एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दिस एलॉयज लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल ब्रास लाइक ब्रोंज नाउ ब्रास इज द इट इज द इट इज द एलॉय ऑफ जिंक एंड कॉपर इट इज द एलॉय ऑफ जिंक ओवर कॉपर Uh, its symbol is Zn. Its symbol is Cu. Okay, and it's it's uh, it it uh, it's also present in the ratio of like thirty is to seven seventy uh, percent. Now bronze bronze is the ally of copper and tin. Is the ally of Cu copper Sn minus tin. Now there is no ratio between them. And solder is the ally of tin and lead. 
third one is shoulder it is a ally of tin and pb pb means lead and there is one more stainless steel it is a ally of three elements three metals iron chromium and nickel stainless steel iron fe cr chromium and i nickel it is a ally of these three now the main thing about ally is that it improves it improves it improves under the properties it improves the properties of uh, uh, the, the compound when it is formed so once the ally is formed it is it is only formed because when the solid is mixed with solid for example iron has some property it will now it will, it will now incorporate itself into chromium and then chromium will incorporate its in uh, itself with this nickel now they have different properties and now once we, we are getting the stainless steel it will have all the properties of these three respective individual components or elements now therefore we can say that the properties they show the properties of their individual components so allies show the properties improved properties they show the properties of their individual components so this was all about allies now we'll move towards colloidal solution now what is colloidal solution let me rub it first now after colloidal solution we will move towards we will take its examples and then we will move towards uh, a new concept uh, that is called a suspension now what is colloidal solution so colloidal solution is the mixture in which particles of, of substances are distributed evenly throughout the solution now they are distributed evenly it is more or same like uh, that uh, homogeneous mixture but here the problem is that uh, it is its particle size is little more high it is it's larger than that of solution therefore it shows the general effect because scattering of light can easily be done in this now therefore we can say a collide appears homogeneous but it's actually heterogeneous just like a solution which has two components this slide uh, this collide is also having two components while in the solution we say solute and solvent uh, here we will take uh, give here we'll use a specific term dispersed phase and dispersion medium in terms of solute and solvent so it is same like that but it is heterogeneous solution is homogeneous simply so colloidal solution so colloidal solution is simply it is mixture of two components in which particles of substance are distributed evenly so here particles are distributed evenly throughout the solution throughout the whole now particle distribute hote hai, now this is what is colloidal is the particle size little bit larger hota hai. Iska particle size is larger than solution solution se iska particle size kuda, zyada hota hai. it seems like homogeneous Ye lagta to homogeneous hai. it seems seems like homogeneous but it is actually heterogeneous it's actually heterogeneous solution and it is also it's having two phases Two, two, two components we can say in terms of solute it's having uh, dispersed phase means it's uh, present in lesser amount in terms of solvent there are we can say in place of solvent we call it dispersion medium dispersion medium so now in the colloidal solution we can take many examples so we'll make a graph we'll make a we'll make a diagram for this and now we'll talk in terms of colloidal in this dispersed phase and dispersion medium now we'll write here dispersed phase now and here dispersion medium then we'll take what type of it is and then some examples now in the dispersed phase we'll take an example that is liquid when the dispersion phase means when the solute is liquid and then in the dispersion medium we'll take when the solute is dissolved in gas now this type is called aerosol this type its famous example is fog cloud mist that means in the fog uh, the solute particles are usually liquid in shape in the liquid phase solute particle or the dispersed phase are they are dispersed in the dispersed medium means these are solute particles and these are solvent particles okay now second example is once we'll uh, use we have used a liquid in gas now we'll use solid in gas solid will be dispersed phase gas will be 
dispersion medium. Again, it's called aerosol. It's a type of aerosol. Now, its famous example are smoke, automobile exhaust. Smoke, automobile exhaust in which dispersed phase is solid. It is dispersed in the, it is present, it is dissolved in the gas. Now, third example is gas in gas or gas in liquid usually. Gas in liquid. Now, here gas is dispersed phase and liquid is dispersion medium. It is called a foam. It is called a foam. Keep it in your mind. This is the important one. And the famous example is of shaving cream. Shaving cream. You can see that's just like that foam. Now, the fourth example is fourth example. This was one phase. Now, liquid in liquid. Now, here we have liquid. Here we have also a liquid. The liquid in liquid means emulsion. The best example is milk. Emulsion. The best example is liquid, uh, milk, or we can use that face cream is also there. Face cream, face cream. That is liquid in liquid, and then solid in liquid. Solid will be present uh, in liquid. Now there's a trick also. So solid means SO, liquid means L. This is soul, SOL soul. So the famous example is milk of magnesia. It is famous example is milk of magnesia. Its formula is magnesium hydroxide mgoh 2 and this is used it's uh, it's milk color it's milk like appearance it's a milk like appearance. even it's also called a brucite it's also called a, this mgoh 2 is also called brucit brucite and this milk of magnesia it's just like that uh, when we uh, go to the medical shop and uh, we buy that anti-acid so this is also this this milk of magnesia is a kind of anti-acid so it is an anti-acid it's, it's used to neutralize our stomach when we have acidity problem so this is Anti acid now, milk of magnesia, and another is mud. Mud is also an example of the soul where solid is dissolved in liquid. Now, we have another example of gas in solid. Sometimes, gas will be dissolved in solid. Now, its example is foam. So it is the it is a type of foam, it is when gas is dissolved in solid. So, best example is foam itself. Foam itself is an example of this foam, and another example is that rubber sponge or humice. A rubber sponge or humice, P U M I C, humice. And then we have an another example that is liquid in solid. Liquid seventh one in solid. It's it is just like gel. It's uh, it's a type of gel, and ge all jelly things are also included in this jelly and cheese and butter is also in this cheese and butter is also included in this now the last one is solid in solid last one eighth one is solid is the dispersed phase it is dissolved in dispersion medium of solid and this is the famous example of solid sol now here its type is is the type of solid sol now solid sol is a type in which dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is also solid example is best example that colored gemstones those colored gemstones along with that milky glass milky glass is also so this was all about colloidal solution now here we have now what is the take home take home is that dispersed phase minus solute which is present in lesser amount and it will be dissolved in dispersion medium where we have seen different types so the main type you need to remember this and then this will automatically follow the way now there are two types of aerosols one is where liquid is dissolved in gas and another is where solid is dissolved in gas foam is a type where gas is dissolved in liquid and another foam is a type where <sighs> gas is dissolved in solid sometimes gas in liquid sometimes gas in solid they both are examples of foam sometimes liquid and solid are dissolved in gas they are the type of aerosols and emulsion is simply liquid in liquid and sol is sometimes solid in liquid sometimes solid in solid is solid sol gel is example of liquid and solid these are some examples so they are usually asked in the examination remember them now the last topic now our last topic is suspension now the suspension now we'll understand the concept of suspension first now this is our last topic and then we'll move towards next topic now the suspension is a heterogeneous mixture again it is a heterogeneous mixture just like colloidal solution in which the solute particles do not dissolve but they remain suspended suspension means suspended they remain suspended throughout the whole bulk of the medium so in the suspension solute particles will not dissolve solute particles will not 
dissolve, but they will be suspended. They will be they will be suspended throughout the whole medium, throughout the whole or entire medium. This medium may be just like suspended. They will be suspended. They dissolve. Okay, yeah, on the on that bottom bottom pay view setup nahi hoongi wo suspend rahenge in the this now it's make example suppose we are uh, after breaking down a chalk piece of chalk this chalk will be dissolved in water is dissolved nahi hoongi ye water hai isme chalk i see suspended rahenge so therefore you can say neither it has settled down nor it has dissolved in this so now to isme solubility ka concept hai dissolution ka na isme settle down na ye unsettled ya niche now you settle down hoongi, now dissolve hoongi, now you settle down hoongi, they will be suspended within the medium. So this is example of suspension. Now what is the chalk in water is the example. Second example, we can take smoke in air. Best example, natural example. Smoke in air. You have seen smoke will be suspended in the air, but it will not settle down. So this is the best example of suspension. Now we will move to the next topic in next class. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.